Hi there, and welcome to today's class. For today's class, we're looking at the Newton's laws of motion. This is actually one of the most important concepts in the study of physics. For today's class, we're looking at Newton's law, and um, I'll be stating them and then perhaps one or two of its application. All right, so one thing to notice is that Newton's law of motion was propounded by Isaac Newton. And there are three, basically, there are three laws under this. The first one is called the law of inertia. So Newton's first law is called the law of inertia. Newton's second law is called the law of acceleration. And Newton's third law is called the law of interaction. All right. So Newton's law can be um, stated as number one, number one, the law of inertia. Number two, the law of acceleration. Number three, the law of interaction. So let's discuss this one after the other. Number one, let's look at Newton's first law of motion called the law of inertia all right so by definition the law newton's law of inertia states that a body will continue in its state of rest or its uniform motion except it is being acted upon by an external force all right that's a definition for newton's law of inertia all right that a body will remain in its state of rest or each uniform motion except it is being acted upon by an external force all right now when we say law of inertia when we use the word inertia when we use the word inertia what does the word inertia mean inertia by definition right inertia by definition is simply the tendency of a body at rest to remain at rest and the tendency of a body or of a, of a moving body to remain in motion that's the concept of inertia so by definition inertia is simply the tendency of a body at rest to remain at rest and the tendency of a body in motion to remain in motion all right that's the idea of inertia so that's the first law of inertia that's how we state this let's look at the second law called the law number two number two is called the law of acceleration all right um, Newton's law of acceleration states that the rate of change of momentum of a body is directly proportional to the applied force that takes place in the direction of that force that's how we state Newton's law of acceleration that the rate of change of momentum of a body is directly proportional to the applied force that takes place in the direction of that force. Okay, so um, Newton's law of acceleration actually has a mathematical expression. In mathematics form, we have that e ma t mathematically, we're saying that um, force would have that force is directly proportional to rate of change of momentum. Now, when we say rate, the word rate is a time-bound word. So when we say the rate of something, it means that thing is changing with respect to time. So it becomes that thing over time. So if you now say the rate of change of momentum, it means momentum changing with respect to time. So the word there, rate, always talks about how fast or how slow something is changing and hence it becomes time. So if we say rate of change of momentum, that becomes change in momentum all over time. This becomes rate of change of momentum. All right? Rate showing time, then change in momentum. So I have this. Now the question would be this. If you look at the law of acceleration critically, we said that the rate of change of momentum is directly proportional to the applied force that takes place or takes yeah, that takes place in the direction of that force. 
So from that definition, we have that the rate of change of momentum first being directly proportional to the force. So if I should consider that, I should be having change in momentum, or perhaps rate of change of momentum being directly proportional to force. This is what I should have. I should have that rate of change of momentum is direct, directly proportional to force. But how come and I now have in the mathematical expression, how come I now have force before rate of change of momentum? From my definition, I'm supposed to have this. But then, in a mathematical form, I am placing the force before the rate of change of momentum. Why is it so? The simple idea is this. There can be no rate of change, there, there can be no change in the momentum of a body without an applied force. So before there could be any change in momentum of a body, a force must first be applied. Now, this one here gives us or takes us back to the idea of inertia or law of inertia, which says that a body will continue in its state of rest or in its uniform motion except it's been applied or affected by what? An external force. So in a real sense, there can be no rate of change of momentum if a force is not applied. That means in a real sense or in a real world, a force must first be applied before there can be a change in momentum. So that's why we place force before momentum. All right? So that's the idea. That this is why we swap this. So we have to understand this concept. All right, so moving on, moving on, uh, what do we have? From here, we have that force F is directly proportional to um, change in momentum, that's this, all over time, T. That's this. Now, if this is tr true, we know that when it comes to signs, to take off the proportionality sign, right, I'll introduce an equal to and a constant, which in this case, we'll have that F, I'll take this off, I'll put an equal to and a constant. The constant here will be k. It becomes equal to k. This two replaces this one here. Bring back this down. It becomes change in momentum all over time, which is rate of change of momentum. For this one here, we'll assume, let's assume that the constant k is unity. By unity, I mean, let's assume that k is 1. That's unity, okay? So when we say unity in science, we mean 1. If k is 1, what do we have? We have that f is equal to k, which is 1 into changing p all over c. So from here, we have that f is equal to 1 times this gives you change in momentum all over time. All right, so we are now at this juncture. Um, let's move on, let's move on, let's move on. But when we say change in momentum, what does it mean? Change in momentum is simply the difference between the final momentum and the initial momentum of a body. Okay, let me use small p. Uh, okay, p2 minus p1. This is change in momentum. Right, basically. So I have this. So the difference between the final and initial momentum gives us um, change in momentum. But we said momentum in our previous class is equal to product of mass and velocity. All right, momentum is equal to product of mass and velocity. So it means that the change in momentum is equal to P2 becomes mass. Since this is the final momentum, it becomes times, let's call this V, all right? I can call this V. Um, v is equal to final velocity minus P1 is mass times the velocity for one becomes U, which is initial velocity. So P, we said is mass times velocity. In this case, it becomes um, mass times final velocity minus, this becomes mass times one, that's initial U, initial velocity. This is what I have here. Now observe that there's no one and two affecting the masses. Why? Because the mass of a body is always the word constant. So the mass of a body is always a constant. That's why we don't have m1 and m2. It's always constant. If this is true, we have this is equal to I have mass, I have mass. Take up the mass, 
So bring mass outside, that's factorizing. If I take off mass here, I'm left with just V. It becomes V minus, take off mass here, I'm left with just U. It becomes U. So this means that the change in momentum is equal to mass into V minus U. So I have this. All right. So if this is true, um, let's fix this idea back into this concept. So we said force is equal to change in momentum all over time. And that's equal to, we just got this value as M into V minus U all over T. So this value is this. I'm doing some mathematical manipulation. We can write this as being equal to, my idea is this, I'll take M out of this, so it becomes M into, I'll be left with V minus U all over T. So please notice what I did. From here, I just shifted the mass outside, becomes V minus U over T. Now, but something, but we know that V minus U is equal to change in velocity. Of course, because V means final velocity and U means initial velocity. So we can say that V minus U is equal to change in velocity. So if this is true, what then do we have? So if this is true, that means we have that um, force is equal to, from this point, from this point, mass, it becomes mass times, we just said V minus U means change in velocity. So force times change in velocity. Now this one here was divided by T. So divide this by t, so divided by t, which is time. So you can use t or time, that's it. But then again, but from the very basics of physics, we know that acceleration, acceleration, that's a, is equal to change in velocity all over time, all right? Because we defined acceleration as the rate of change of velocity. So acceleration is equal to change in velocity over time. If that's true, that means that force is equal to mass. Let me write this in. Okay, mass times change in velocity over time, we said is acceleration. That's acceleration. If I combine this, it means that force is equal to mass times acceleration. This is the mathematical expression of Newton's second law of motion, right? So we have this one here. It's a very important concept, a very critical concept in physics that force is equal to the product of mass and acceleration. All right, All right so let's look, at the, let's look at Newton's third law of motion. It is called the law of interaction. And the law of interaction simply states that to every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. That is um, the statement of Newton's third law of motion, also called the law of interaction. All right, so we finally discussed um, all of Newton's laws of motion, law of inertia, law of acceleration, and then the law of interaction. So we'll see how we apply the concept, especially the law of acceleration, into um, the rate of change of momentum or, or, or into the law of conservation of momentum. We we'll also look at how to apply the law of interaction into things like the recoil of a gun and etc. All right. We we'll look at this in our next class. Okay. All right. So I've made over 50 videos on physics, chemistry, mathematics, and the other sciences to help you prepare for your YEC or JAM examination. All right. To get my complete videos on physics, chemistry, mathematics, and the likes, please visit, visit my website, 
jonahimano.com forward slash courses then look at the jam slash yec classes you can get it from there all right it gives you a lifetime access to all my classes on physics maths chemistry and the other sciences all right all right then so, so see you in our next class